My name is Ricardo, and I'm your host in Math Matters, and today I'm here to talk to you guys about probability. So in this installment of probability, we're going to discuss what mathematical principles of probability, what calculation methods of probability we need to use to make them relevant in the problems we're going to discuss later. So, I've already discussed how probability is um, the likelihood of an event happening, and the number of ways that can, that event, we call it event A, the number of ways that event can happen divided by the number of total outcomes. Now, if you need a refresher on that, or you want to um, see me elaborate a little more about how that works and how that relates to the probability of something never happening and the probability of something always happening, um, please watch my other video on, on introduction probability. For this, video, for this video, rather, we're going to discuss which mathematical principles we need to know in order to make them relevant, uh, in order to make this understanding of probability relevant to the problems we're going to discuss. The first of which I want to discuss is perhaps the most simple, and it's the probability of not A. So that means the probability of something not happening. Now, if the probability of A, P A, means the probability of our event A happening, and that's usually the general notation for an event, but we can change that event later, the probability of not A would be the probability of that event not happening. So we're just counting how many ways that doesn't happen. Easy enough, right? But this is calculated as 1 minus the probability of A. So if you're given the probability of A, you can calculate the probability of not A. Now, um, 1 minus makes sense because 1 is probability of something always happening because the number of ways the event occurs over the number of total outcomes would be the same. So it's, you know, 6 over 6, for instance, on a 6-sided die. And that's just 100%. 100% of the time it happens in decimal form is 1. So 1 is every scenario counted, and then you subtract the scenarios that A happens, the probability of A. So 1 is the complete probability, probability of A is the probability you don't want to count, and this makes this formula make sense. So let's try our example of 1 6. If we, want to, if we know the probability of 6, the probability of rolling a 6 on a 6 sided die is 1 out of 6 because it can only happen one time out of the 6 sides, we know that the probability of not 6 is 1 minus probability of 6, which is 1 minus 1 6. And like I said before, 1 would be 6 over 6, right? So 6 over 6 minus 1 over 6 is 5 over 6. Now this makes sense because if you think about what the probability of not 6 means in terms of counting it, the number of ways it can occur over a number of total outcomes, the number of ways you can not roll a 6 are 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Every number other than 6, so that number makes sense. Divided by the number of total outcomes, which is still 6. Just like it was in our probability of A. So this answer makes sense. Now you would say, Ricardo, this is, you know, a ridiculously, uh, it's a ridiculous sounding topic that you need to teach. Why use it? Well, the probability of not A is really hard because in this case you could just count it. But if you want to talk about the probability of you know, 67 over 14,000, or some giant number like that, where the number of total outcomes is huge, you can't necessarily count the number of not something happening. So if you want to talk about, there's only two options. Um, if you know one option, and, there, and the number of total outcomes is just too large, the, number, the sample size is just too large for you to count the other option, you can take one minus the option you already know, and immediately know the other part. And that's kind of logical, but it helps a lot when you're talking about probability that you don't want and knowing what that means in your problem. So that's the first topic, and we'll see that later in our problems. The next two related are, are related intrinsically because they both deal with probability of multiple things happening. So probability of multiple events are a little complicated, and it's a little complicated to know the difference between them. But we're going to analyze that in our problems later, and right now um, we're going to analyze them mathematically. So. Probability gets really interesting when you talk about something, um, you know, more than one thing happening. With one thing happening, you can count it, you understand what it means, but when you talk about multiple things happening, they can happen together, they can happen separately, you want to count the different ways they can happen. So, we can denote that first as probability of A and of B. So, the first thing we have is P of A and B, where you want both an event A and an event B to happen. So, the way this happens is how many times a happens, and then for every time A happens, B also has to happen. So it's an even smaller fraction, right? So it's just two fractions multiplied by each other, 
and that's probability A and B. So this is a difficult concept unless you try to apply it. So let's think about um, in you know rolling you know six-sided die. If you have two, if you have a pair of dice that you're rolling and you want to get the same thing happening, let's say you want to get snake eyes, right? You want to get two ones in um, in dice. That's called snake eyes. If you want to get the same thing happening, it's the probability of rolling a one and another one. Let's make them constant or the same. Probability of rolling a one and another one is probability of rolling a one times probability of rolling a one. These two multiply by each other, one sixth times one sixth, right? Times one sixth. And that's just um, if we multiply the tops, one times one is one, the bottoms, six times six is 36. And that's just uh, the probability of getting snake eyes. And that immediately makes our very simple example of ruling a die much more interesting and much more relevant because if you want to know what's the probability of rolling the same thing twice if you roll uh, paradise what's the probability of rolling them both at the same time then it's really interesting to know uh, these independent probabilities we call them independent because they don't have any influence on each other one of them could be one sixth and the other one could be one sixth and we can just multiply them it's a nice it's a nice math thing to do just multiplying the numbers with fractions Knowing this probability can be really useful, and we'll see those in our problems. And the third one, like I said, is related because it's the probability of A or B. So, probability of A or B is a bit different, and we have to know the disting uh, how to distinguish them. So, P of A or B, a little sloppy, is two probabilities again. Except either one happens or the other happens, and if you want to if you want to count how many times one happens or the others, you've actually increased your chances because if one happens, you're that's that's not all your chances. Um, you're upset because you still have all the probability included in the second event. So let's think of again. Let's think of uh, rolling dice. So this is a, a pretty abstract concept until you apply it. So let's say. You win a million dollars if you roll a one on a six-sided die. Okay, you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't trust that game so much. That doesn't pay off too well, but it's still a very nice prize. What if I say you roll, you win a million dollars if you roll a one or a six? Well, P, probability of one or a six, is, like I said, probability of one plus probability of six. Uh, and that's one sixth plus one sixth. I'm not going to do that out, but you can tell that is a much better probability. So when we do probability of one or six and probability of one, you know, one and one, for instance, that's a very different chance because P of A and B makes it harder to happen, whereas P of A or B, you have an increased chance and they mean very different things, even though you're simultaneously rolling. So that's the three concepts we're going to talk about in probability and we're going to apply those in our problem that you'll see next. Hi guys, thank you so much for watching my video, it really does mean a lot. And if you enjoyed this one, I encourage you to watch the next video of my series. And hey, if you're done with the series, there's always more mathematics to learn. Because remember, math matters.